Hello and welcome back. Now, what are the best opportunities for you in Web3? First, let's start with some common terms used in Web3. Finance is abbreviated to just FI. Examples include DeFi, decentralized finance, and GameFi, game finance. Market cap is a total US dollar value of a project, cryptocurrency, or company. For example, the market cap of Bitcoin is 386 million at the time of this recording. Now, trustless transactions are the act of transacting money between multiple parties with no middleman or needing to trust a word of the other party. And finally, decentralized exchanges are exchanges that enable trustless transactions to occur with no KYC. So with that out of the way, let's get back to the main topic. First on the list is GameFi or Game Finance. And it's exactly what it sounds like, video games and real money. In other words, you get paid to play video games through an in-game economy, similar to the metaverse, which is an open world game with its own economy. In those both scenarios, it's a player-based economy where seemingly no real-world value is being produced. However, if there's one thing crypto has shown, is that value really is defined by the players who are engaged in that activity or purpose. The most well-known gameplay project is Axie Infinity. Axie Infinity is a role-based game where users breed axes, which are Pokemon-like creatures, to breed and battle each other for money. Axie Infinity is also one of the oldest gameplay projects and did not see a large insurgence until November of 2021, where it's increased by an astonishing 135,000% in just one year. Yes, you heard that right, 135,000% increase, going from $7.7 .7 million market cap in November of 2020 to $10.5 billion at its peak in November of 2021. Try finding that in the stock market. Now, it's crazy to think that you can get paid to play video games and not be a professional or entertainer, but Web3 quite literally brings power to the people. Now, according to analysis by Crypto.com, GameFi's market cap reached an average of $34 billion at the start of this year and it's predicted to grow 10 times faster than the traditional gaming industry, according to Navic and Bitcraft. Now, these numbers are not entirely accurate as there is not a universal standard as to what defines GameFi just yet. For example, some classify Decentraland as GameFi, whereas CoinGecko does not, hence the average figure of $34 billion stated. Next is a personal favourite, Decentralised Finance, or DeFi as it's more commonly known, is one of the biggest innovations of this century and technically started off back with Bitcoin in 2009. However, I'm referring to the boom of borrowing and lending platforms that appeared back in summer of 2020, also known as DeFi Summer. Now, DeFi has enabled anyone in the world with access to the internet to engage in trustless transactions through decentralized exchanges that operate purely on code and no middleman. Now the term decentralization is pseudo anonymous. I say pseudo anonymous because you're not really anonymous since a blockchain is a public ledger and records every single transaction that's taken place. So technically somebody could track you down if they really wanted to, which is another problem entirely. Now, Bloomberg recently published an article predicting the DeFi market to be worth over $200 billion by 2030. But honestly, this sounds very bearish especially considering the mass inflation that's been occurring and also the incoming surge of people into cryptocurrencies. So I would say it would be fair to assume 10 times the amount, which is 2.2 trillion by 2030. Finally, a term I'm sure everybody is familiar with by now, the metaverse. Everybody and their dog knew what it was when Facebook changed their name to Meta because this event triggered a surge in popularity and price increase for already existing cryptocurrency metaverse projects, such as Decentraland, Sandbox, and Mirandus. However, for Meta themselves, it did not hit quite that they expected. 
Since the announcement, their stocks have gone down by 42% and many people are continuing to doubt its potential. A close metaverse alternative already exists and it's called VRChat, a virtual reality game that is free with pay to play features. But interestingly enough, four months prior to Meta's formal announcement, VRChat received an $18 million funding round to quote, create its own digital economy. However, there was no mention of cryptocurrencies here, but one can assume they're coming. Bloomberg predicts the metaverse is an $800 billion market by 2024, and other sources predict it to be $1.3 trillion by 2030 and upwards. Now we can understand why Facebook or Meta chose this route. Now, whilst these are three very hot topics, there's a key utility that unites all of them together. Non-fungible tokens, also known as NFTs. What are they? And why are they so valuable? Stay tuned for more and I'll see you soon.